Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing really really well and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For any of you that are new here, I'm Becca, I'm a professional pet portrait and wildlife artist specialising in realistic coloured pencil drawings of animals and wildlife. So we've been working our way through this um, badger tutorial, this is going to be part four. I have left the link to part one in the video description below so if you want to start it from the start then you can do. I've also left the line drawing, the materials list and the reference photo for each part of the tutorial as well. So we're just going to be carrying on really. Um, I think I'm going to make a start on the white fur um, to begin with and just carry on kind of with that fur, that stripe kind of going up the middle of the head and um, finish that off first. So I'm going to be using similar colours to what I've used previously. Um, I think I'm going to start by going in with the cold grey one polychromo. So as usual, I'm going to be using a mixture of Faber-Castell polychromos and Caran d'Ache luminance pencils. They're like my favourite coloured pencils ever and um, yeah, they, they work really well on drafting film as well, which is what we're working on here. So I'm just adding this cold grey one into like the shadowy areas of the white fur. I think with white fur in general, you always want to go a little bit darker than you might first initially think. Um, focus on where those shadows are and really kind of exaggerate them slightly. You also want to look at where this white fur is merging in with the edge of that black fur as well. Kind of work into that edge, elongate some of these darker lines as well. So everything looks like it's, you know, kind of merging together nicely, flowing together. So with drafting film, like I've said previously, you just want to be really delicate with every single pencil stroke that you add in and keep your pressure fairly light throughout the whole entire portrait. There's not like one moment really on drafting film that you need to, you know, really press down hard. I think the lighter that you are with it, the more layers it allows you to add because you can't add loads of layers on drafting film. That's the only thing because um, I'm like, I'm used to working on Fabriano paper, which is quite toothy. It still feels quite smooth to draw on and to feel, but it's got a really fine grain to it, which means that it holds on to loads of layers. Whereas drafting film is completely different. It's got no tooth whatsoever, no grain. Um, so all the layers and colours are just kind of sitting on top of the surface. So it can only take so many. Um, so yeah, that's why I say just be delicate and keep your pressure light throughout the whole drawing. So I'm doing back and forth motions, kind of shading in where those shadowy areas are in the white fur and following along the same direction as the fur as well, just kind of going up the centre of the, the face. Kind of curves round slightly at the top of the head. So I'm going to London on Tuesday next week, um, it's currently uh, Thursday today, so I've got the rest of this week and the weekend to get prepared, um, but I don't know if I mentioned it in the previous part, I can't really remember, but basically I submitted my stag, which is like the biggest colour pencil drawing that I've ever done, 
which I have actually done as a tutorial on Patreon if you want to um, have a go at that. The link to my Patreon is also in the video description below. Um, so it's it's huge and I had to take it down to London to the Green and Stone Gallery in Chelsea because it was pre-selected for their summer exhibition. Um, so I, go, I had to drop it off like the other week and then wait for a few days to see if it had been selected for the actual exhibition. And if it hadn't, then I had to go back down and pick it up. But luckily it did get chosen for the exhibition. So the private viewing is on the 1st of August. Um, so yeah, I'll be heading down there on Tuesday for that, which I'm really excited for. But I think it's always, well, it's always a good thing to do to be part of like an exhibition and see your work in like a professional space, especially with other artists as well. Um, you get to see like a wide variety of work, all different mediums, and you get to speak to like loads of different artists as well, um, potential buyers, people from the gallery. It's like just a good kind of networking event because I think as an artist, you do spend quite a lot of time on your own, especially when you're working like for yourself. Um, you spend a lot of time on your own. So doing all these like exhibitions and stuff on the side as well, it's just a good way to, you know, make some like connections and do a bit of networking as well, which is always a good thing to do. Um, so on the private viewing night, there's also like an awards ceremony. I think there's like 10 awards that they're giving out. Um, one's like the drawing prize. Can't quite remember the others, but there's, there's ones for like different kinds of mediums, um, like some cash prizes. And then the main one is the Green and Stone Gallery Prize, which is like the overall kind of winner, if you will. Um, and they get a fully funded two week solo show at the gallery, which obviously would be insane. <laughs> so fingers crossed to get that. I mean, you've got to be in it to win it, I suppose. So I've got as much chance as everyone else that's exhibiting. But I think there are quite a lot of artists there. So yeah, we'll see. Fingers crossed. But I'm just really happy anyway to have been um, chosen for that exhibition. Um, it's in a really good area in London. So yeah, I'm excited for it. So that's on Tuesday night. So yeah, what else have I had going on? I've just finished a commission yesterday, which was a 12 by 16 inch portrait of a tabby cat. Um, I'll be sharing it on social media very soon, but... It wasn't my usual kind of angle. It was like, because usually I do like straightforward, um, you know, front facing portraits of like the face and then fade it off at the neck, leaving quite a lot of white space around it. Um, but this one was more of like a full body portrait, kind of on its side. It was lying down and its paws were kind of facing the, the viewer. So it was quite difficult to do. Uh, but I always like doing something that's a bit different and a bit challenging a bit more challenging so yeah so i finished that yesterday and that's on its way to australia um and i've got one more commission left to do for this month which again is another cat i've been doing quite a lot of cats recently which is weird because i've like always done dogs um i feel like now it's becoming more sort of half half which is nice because it mixes it up a little bit i do absolutely love drawing cats but I am definitely a dog person. So I'm gonna leave that there with the cold gray one. So next up, I'm gonna go in with the warm gray one just to get some warmer tones in there. Um, again, I think I have mentioned before that with white fur, it's always really important to have a mixture of both cooler and warmer tones otherwise it can end up looking quite flat if you've got kind of more of one than the other um so yeah and just predominantly focus on the shadowy areas and kind of really exaggerate them So for those of you that um, follow me on social media already, 
You might know that I've got a red cockapoo called Bella. I probably post more about her than I do about my work. Um, but honestly, she's so cute. She's um, she's eight now, which is mad. Everyone still thinks she's a puppy. Um, but yeah, so I've got a funny story actually. So yesterday, was it yesterday? The day before? I think it was the day before yesterday. So I was about to go to the gym and then someone knocked at the door. So I went downstairs and there was a woman at the door saying, is this your dog? And I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, my dog's right here and I'm about to take her out for a walk before I go to the gym. Um, so we were really confused and someone had said to her, like, oh, it, I think it belongs to, to me. Um, you know, she's got a dog that looks very similar. I think it might be her. So that's why she came to my house thinking it was Bella. Anyway, it wasn't Bella. Um, so yeah, basically got ended up with Bella's double and it had no tag on. It had a collar on, but it didn't have a tag on. So I didn't know who it belonged to. Um, so anyway, I took both of the dogs out. Me and my mum went out. She was holding Bella. I was holding this little lost dog that was Bella's double. So we were going around the estate kind of knocking on, um, you know, like doggy people, people that we see on dog walks and that, you know, know the dogs in the area just asking if they, you know, recognise this little dog. And they didn't. And they were all really confused saying, is it not your dog? And I was like, well, no, because Bella's right here. Um, so, yeah, and then we went to the park and there was a group of dog walkers on there and they didn't have a clue either who this little dog might belong to. So eventually I was like, right, I'll post on the public, like, Facebook page for our area and see if anyone recognises this little dog and who it might belong to. Um, but it took a while for it to post because I think when you post on like a public Facebook page, the admin needs to like accept it for it to actually post. So I had to wait about an hour for that. Um, but anyway, it did post in the meantime and then people were starting to share the post. So it was going around. Um, so in the meantime, we brought this little dog back into our garden and it was running around like doing the mad zoomies, jumping on the table, on the chairs, just like going mad. I think it was only a young one as well. Look, younger than Bella. We, we left Bella inside because she doesn't really like other dogs. She gets a bit jealous because she likes to be number one. All the attention on her. Um, so yeah, we're just left with this dog that was going mad around the garden. Anyway, someone said, oh, I think it's so-and-so's down the road. And it was. So it got reunited with its owner. It is I think it had escaped out of their back gate. But yeah, I was planning on having a really productive morning, going to the gym, finishing some work off. And yeah, that didn't happen because I was walking around here trying to find this little dog's owner. But yeah, at least we did find it. So that was my uh, good deed of the day, I think. So I'm gonna leave that there with the warm gray one. Next up, I'm going to go in with the silver grey luminance pencil and just around like the edges where that white fur meets the black fur. I'm just going to add a little bit into that area. The silver grey's got a lovely like subtle blue tint to it. I'm going to do the same to the other side. like that and then I'm going to go in with the warm grey three which is slightly darker and this is where you can start drawing in some of those darker hair details so like we've got underneath here where we've got some of these lines kind of standing out I'm going to do the same to like the top half of this strip of white fur
So if you want a line to stand out, um, I wouldn't apply a harder pressure for it to show up more. I'd just, with the same pressure, just go over that same area a few times, kind of go over that same line like that. Next up I'm going to go in with the Raw Ombre 50% just to make some of those lines stand out a little bit more and make them a bit darker. This also has a really subtle like greeny kind of khaki colour to it. Um, still quite neutral and subtle but if you do look at the white fur there are elements in that that are slightly green. So this is going to help us achieve that like subtle green colour without being too overpowering. I think Luminance pencils have really nice like neutral kind of colours that the polychromos don't have. That's why I like to use a mixture of both of them um, for the colours and for like how they work as well. Luminance pencils are predominantly wax based so they're a much softer pencil than the polychromos meaning they're really good for base layers they're good for blending um kind of smudging pigments together because they're quite waxy and soft whereas the polychromos are really good for detail because they're predominantly oil based so they're a much harder pencil they can stay sharper for much longer um but they do have really nice like vibrant colors so if you're looking to build up tonal value definitely the uh, the polychromo is definitely the ones but i think they both complement each other really well so yeah i only started by you know getting a few luminance pencils to start off with because they're not the cheapest i think if you buy the pencils individually i don't know how much they are now maybe about like three pound fifty depending on where you get them from you can buy them in a set um but I always think with sets, you end up using like you don't end up using all the colours, and especially if you if you know you're going to be drawing predominantly animals, then you're going to need like browns, really neutral colours like blacks, whites, that kind of thing. Um, you're not going to need like really vibrant like greens and blues and pinks. So yeah, I think getting like a couple of like the neutral toned luminance pencils if you've never tried them before um, is a good good way to start just try a few just to begin with i started by buying like a couple of really pale colors like the silver gray the pink white and the buff titanium and i would use them as base layers because they provide such a creamy like buttery base to work on top of everything just seemed to blend a lot easier when you use luminance pencils as a base layer and then from there i just kind of developed my 
pencil set and how many I actually got. Every time I would do an, another art order or another pencil order, I'd just try out a few more colours of the Luminance pencils. So I've got quite a few now, but I'd say there's eight that are my absolute go-to that I use all the time. So I've probably mentioned this a million times before, but it's the Buff Titanium, the Silver Grey, the Pink White, the Raw Umber 10%, the French Grey 30%, the Warm Earth 40%, the Sepia 10% and the Olive Brown 10%. The percentages just mean like how saturated that colour is. So for example, this is a raw umber 50%, but like I said just before, the raw umber 10% would be the one that I would recommend if you're like looking to buy a few luminance pencils to try them out. Um, if I can find it, which is here, you can see the difference. So they're both the same colour, but one's just a lot more saturated than the other. And that's literally what the percentages just mean. Um, so yeah, I'm going to leave that there with the raw under 50% before I make it look too green. And then just to kind of bring back some of those highlights within that white fur, if you've ended up making it look a little bit muddy or a bit too dark, um, then it's very fixable. I like to go in with the Ultra Fine Tombow Mono Zero Elastoma Eraser, proper mouthful. Um, but this is like the ultra fine one, 2.3 millimeters, so it's literally tiny and erasers work exceptionally well on drafting film because um, like I said, that pigment is just sitting on the top. It's not kind of sitting in any grooves of the paper. It's just on the top on the surface. So it just comes off really easily. So in those brightest parts of the white fur, you might just want to go in with that eraser just to make it look a bit brighter. And with it being such a fine rubber, the marks that you make are almost like your pencil anyway. So you still want to kind of replicate those hair-like strands and kind of fur-like motions going up towards the top of the head, just following along the same direction as the fur. can also work into the edge as well, elongate some of those lighter hairs into the darker fur to help it merge together. So yeah, and then just to make some of those darker details stand out a little bit more, I'm going to go in with the warm grey four, making sure it's quite sharp so I can get those really fine lines in there. And yeah, you just basically want to go over those like darkest lines, really pick some of them out to stand out and we can start sort of showing that detail in the fur.
So I'm going to leave that there, I think. And then if you wanted to go back in with that rubber, then you can do, I think, just above like these two little tufts of um, lighter fur within that black fur, like just above that, this white fur in the middle is probably at its brightest. So I'm just going to work into that area with my Tombow eraser, just to brighten it up a little bit. anywhere else in that white fur that you just need to kind of bring out more of those highlights. And then just to finish off, you can go in with the White Caran Dash Museum Aquarell Pencil. This is my favourite white pencil ever. It shows up really well over multiple layers of colour pencil. Shows up quite well over dark pigment as well because it's such a pigmented pencil in itself. Um, yeah, it's definitely the best white pencil I've ever tried. And I know a lot of artists would agree. So I'm just elongating some of those light hairs from the white fur, bringing them into that black fur. And then I'm going to focus on the black fur to the left of it, so on the left hand side of the face. So before I actually start that black fur, I'm just going to fill in this little like white tuft at the top of the ear, using pretty much all the same colours in the same order that we've um, just used to finish off this white fur in the middle. So I'm going to go back in with that cold grey one and just start to fill in this little white tuft on the top of the ear. I'm planning on getting the whole like left hand side of the face done in this part so it might be slightly longer than the previous parts that I've uploaded um, but then at least we've got you know the majority of the face done and then in the next part we can focus on that like nose and mouth area and then we shouldn't be too far off finishing. Just got the body left to do but I think with the body I want to keep it sort of out of focus. So I am going to show you how you can achieve that out of focus, like slightly blurred, like in the background effect. So if you're wanting all the attention to be on like the most detailed part of like your drawing um, and have areas of the background or the body kind of out of focus, then I'll show you how to do that. Next up, I'm going to go in with the warm grey one. And also a tiny little bit of the silver grey at the tip of the ear, right at the top. You want to do some slightly curved little tufts, kind of flicking up. And I'm also going to use the Buff Titanium, which is a really pale, like yellowy colour. And just work that into that white tuft at the top of the ear, make it look a bit more cream and like off-white in some areas. Then you want to go in with your warm grey three, kind of at 
where the uh, the edge of the black fur meets that white fur. That's kind of where I'm working into. Flicking up towards that white fur. And then just finish off with the warm grey four, so like the shade darker, just to make some of those darker like hair strands stand out a little bit more. And then if you wanted to go back in with that like ultra fine Tombow eraser, just to make parts of that tuft in the ear look really quite bright. And just remove some of that pigment and you can do. I think just leave a little bit on the very edge so it kind of differentiates the drawing and the white paper. I think actually, you know, erasing areas and almost like drawing back in those highlights with a slight shadow behind it like we've got here with that kind of slightly darker pigment behind it kind of adds depth to the ear um gives us a really nice effect you can also flick down as well flick down and up both ways like that so this is where we can focus on that black fur really building up that pigment like we've done on the right hand side and um, i'm just going to get a bit of paper to put over what i've got so far just so i'm not smudging it with my hand um so i'm going to start by going in with the cold gray five and basically just filling in the entire area of this black fur so into the ear and up to the top of the head, kind of carrying on from where we left off. Really look at those subtle direction changes as well and also look at the shape of the edge of that black fur and how it meets that white fur. I wonder how many times I say fur in a tutorial. <laughs> probably like 10 billion. Um, but when you're describing something, it's really hard not to. So yeah, you wanna flick down like on the diagonal into that white fur. There we go again. <laughs> All the way along, right up to the top of the head. Then you wanna flick up, release any pressure right at the end. I also think, you know, your pencil very quickly wears down on one side. So you've got that flat, um, that flat side of your pencil to shade with and it gives you a much softer line, much more even coverage. But you've also got that really sharp bit on like the other side of your pencil. And when you approach like the top of the head and for those like wispy little lines that you want to do, then I think it's better to use like the pointier side of your pencil. like that and then go back to using the flatter side just to fill in the rest of this fur and I'm only using a super light pressure making sure it's even like all over and obviously we've got that pan pastel underneath um, which is providing that really nice like tinted base for us already
So in those darkest areas of the fur, I've just added a few more layers and kind of gone over the same area with that cold grey five, um, just so I can start to differentiate, you know, where those lighter and darker areas are within that black fur. But on the whole, it's basically an even coverage all the way through and then kind of flicking up towards that white tuft in the ear. Next up, I'm going to go in with the Payne's Grey, which is much darker. And again, you just want to do the same thing. So keep building up that dark pigment. Again, you want to kind of flick down into that white fur diagonally. And really look at how the fur is like formed and all those little tufts and layers. There's almost like layers of fur because it's quite thick. So it's creating these shadows in between that are kind of like tiered. And then with the same pressure, you just want to go over the areas that are slightly darker than everywhere else and just add like a couple more layers of the Payne's Grey over the top.
So on the left hand side of this black fur, I'm just elongating some of those hairs, keeping my pressure super light, like literally just letting it brush across the surface. Like that. And then you want to work into this ear as well. Think, look at the white fur and the black fur as two separate shapes um, so you can just try and like tweak those edges to get the shape right if you know what I mean constantly flicking it up into that white fur though and also on the edge of the black fur as well you want to do the same thing like really fine wispy hairs all along that edge and it will just give the illusion of that really soft fur. Next up I'm going to use the dark indigo which is a really nice like dark blue colour and you want to go in with this quite lightly again just to add some like subtle blue undertones to that fur and I'm mainly going to work into like the light areas of the fur and the idea with undertones is that you add a colour that's quite bright and vibrant this is quite a you know really rich dark blue colour um, but you add it at like this sort of stage so it kind of shows through from all the layers that we add on top of it as well. It kind of tints it from underneath. So it's going to keep this black fur looking quite blue in some parts, which is what we want. And again, I'm just using like the flattest part of the tip of my pencil to give me that really soft line so it blends with all those pigments underneath that we've got down already. I'd say around the ear looks more brown than blue. The main blue parts are kind of this part on the black fur, like the main part on the face. I'm going to leave it like that. So for those brown parts in the fur, I'm going to use the dark sepia, which is a really dark brown. And I'd say you mainly want to work into the left edge and around the ear.
can also add a layer into those darkest parts in the fur as well, where all those little shadows are, just to help build up that darker pigment. So the next two colours that I'm going to use are the Violet Grey and the Light Cobalt Blue, both luminance pencils. I'm going to start off by using the Violet Grey, which is kind of a neutral lilac -y colour. And you want to work into the lightest parts of the black fur. Again, using a super light pressure you can see already how it just how luminance pencils just so naturally like smooth out those pigments underneath with ease I'm constantly flicking kind of up into the same direction as the fur just to make it obvious that it's all flowing and going in the same sort of direction. Keeping my pencil stroke super delicate as well, kind of flicking at the end of each one. And then you want to go over that with the light cobalt blue, which is like a really pale um, light blue. It's a bit more vibrant than the silver grey that we used before, but it's fairly similar. So it's just creating some really nice colours in the fur before we go in with the black to really kind of darken everything.
I'm very briefly just going to use the Van Dyke brown around the ears just to increase that kind of warm brown tone. I think the dark sepia is slightly too dark for what we're trying to achieve. This is more of like a lighter chocolatey brown. Again, elongate some of those lines into the white fur. And then this is where you want to go in with your black, making sure it's quite sharp. And you want to go over all of these shadows and literally kind of draw in every single um, like hair strand that you can see. The thing with drafting film is that it picks up every single detail. Like it, you can get so much detail in there. So make every single line kind of count, if you will. You can get really fine lines that look like individual hair strands and you can just keep building on that contrast by darkening those shadows and because we've got those lovely like undertones of those like violet sort of lilacs and a few browns as well that's going to kind of show through um underneath all these shadows so it's going to make the fur look realistic and not flat. So in between the shadows, um, where these lighter areas are in the fur, you kind of want to elongate your lines from one area of shadow to another and make them kind of link. So it just helps to kind of show that all the fur is kind of together, it's all flowing in the same direction. So 
So we're constantly doing like back and forth motions, just building up all that texture and tonal value. So as tempting as it is to press on harder for those really dark areas, try not to. Just keep adding like layer after layer until it gradually, you know, increases that saturation.
So we've managed to make some of those areas really, really dark with that black. Um, and we can't really see much of that grain from underneath either anymore. So I'm just gonna finish off that black fur by pulling out those highlights again. So I'm firstly gonna use the silver gray and work into those lightest parts in the black fur. Doing similar like back and forth motions over what we've got already. There's this little bit here on the left hand side of the ear. So something like that and if you want to make areas stand out a little bit more you could go in with the white Caran d'Ache Museum aquarelle pencil just into those same areas but just make certain strands stand out a little bit more, make them a bit brighter. So you should find at this point that it's difficult for the drafting film to kind of hold on to any more layers. You can kind of feel it with your pencils that it's just not taking any more layers. So we've kind of reached our limit with what we can add to it. But we can go in with the craft knife slice tool, which I've used in all the previous parts so far, but it's basically got a ceramic blade on the end with a curved edge and a pointier edge and you can basically like scrape off those top layers of pigment and it'll just reveal the kind of paper underneath. So again, you can kind of draw back in those highlights and kind of lift off that pigment. So just for those brightest like strands in the fur is kind of where I'm gonna use this slice tool. And again, be super delicate. Make sure the ends of each of your lines just kind of gradually um, kind of wisp away. You can do some um, white hairs from this white fur kind of going into the black fur as well elongate some of them
So that's it in terms of the black fur. I'm just going to finish off the top of it, the top of that ear, with the um, warm grey two. So where the black fur and the white fur meet, I just want a few more like beigey tones around that area. So the warm grey two is kind of like the perfect colour to do that with. Kind of like an off-white neutral beige. I'm kind of working from that black fur into the white fur. And then if you wanted to go back in with like the dark sepia, just add a few more wispy hairs flicking up into that ear than you can do. So I've just moved my camera down slightly so we can start focusing on the left hand side of the face in terms of this white fur. So basically just mirroring what we can see on the right hand side. The left hand side in the reference photo we can see more of so it's got quite a lot more detail and also it's more in the shadow than the right hand side. So there's a lot more shadow and colour and like darker details that we can work with. Um, so I'm going to approach it like I have done with all the other white fur areas and start by using the cold grey one especially this bit here kind of towards the back as it's um, kind of merging in with the rest of that body that fur does look cool and has a subtle blue tint to it so this colour is kind of perfect I also might go in with a silver grey as well just to get more of that blue tint in there um, but we can kind of see like the similar shapes that we've got going on already from um, underneath where we added that pan pastel. So I'm kind of using that as a guide just to fill in that area. Then this white fur in the middle is very much beige and then it kind of gets cooler as it reaches um, the edge of that black fur again. So you want to add a little bit of this cold grey one kind of on the edge all the way down the face.
So I've also just added a little bit through the rest of the fur as well, but predominantly focused on the edge of this fur and also like towards the back. Like that then you want to go in with your warm gray one and get some of those warmer tones in there and then predominantly focus on this middle bit that's like a beige kind of neutral off-white color So I'm going to go in with that silver grey luminance pencil and focus on that fur very much on the left hand side, add in those like subtle blue tints to the ends before it meets the rest of that body. Kind of flicking back down towards the rest of the fur and then flicking back out as well. And then a little bit just along the edge. So I'm going to focus on this beige fur kind of in the middle of all of this white fur. And I'm going to use a mixture of the raw umber 10% and the French grey 30%. As you can see, they're both just off white, very neutral beigey tone. So perfect just for building up a bit of shadow within that white fur. So I'm going to start with the lightest being the raw umber 10% and just start working into some of those shadowy areas. Just adding a little bit of this cream colour into the fur keeping my pressure super light and following along the same direction as the fur.
and then you want to go in with the French grey 30% in all the same areas pretty much. So I'm kind of filling in more of the shadows with this French grey 30% and that fur is starting to take a bit more structure. You can kind of see, you know, individual shapes and where different tufts are and how it's all kind of compact together, being quite like a dense bit of fur. I feel like Badger's fur is quite a lot thicker than you think. They're very fluffy. This is actually the first Badger that I've ever drawn which is exciting um so yeah i'm drawing quite a lot of british wildlife at the minute um i've done quite a lot i've sold quite a lot as well i was planning on doing like a british wildlife collection um just working on a bit of a project and you know having them all sort of similar sizes but all like british wildlife but um most of them have been like tutorials and I've sold quite a lot of them as well, so it's kind of like what I'm left with. But um, yeah, I do like drawing British wildlife. I think African wildlife is a lot more exciting. There's a lot more going on with like the patterns, like leopards and stuff like that. But British wildlife is just very neutral, I'd say, in terms of like the colours. But yeah, this badger in particular has been really good for practising black and white fur. I know it's what a lot of people struggle with. So it has been a good practice. So I'm gonna leave that there with the French gray 30%. In those cooler parts of the fur, I'm gonna go in with the violet gray to add some subtle lilac-y tones amongst that white fur. So I'm mainly gonna start in this area.
from adding it along the edge. And you also want to kind of flick back down into this lighter area of fur here. And I've also just added a tiny little bit to the left hand side where that fur is looking quite cool, quite blue. Just added that subtle bit of that lilac-y colour in there. Like that. I'm going to add a little bit of the cold grey 3 and apply this basically everywhere where we've just added that violet grey. You want to work into the shadows as well and differentiate some of these shapes and these tufts in the fur. And then this cooler bit of fur on the left that's kind of merging with that surrounding fur in the body. There's a lot of um, overlapping going on with all these different tufts and it's hard to kind of visualise where they all are. So I'm just going to lightly shade in like the shadows of the body fur behind them just so we can get a bit more of an idea of the shapes and stuff. Obviously I'll be focusing more on that body fur in the future parts, in like the next couple of parts. Um, but yeah, just to help us get these shapes right, um, like on the edge of the face, I'm just gonna draw in the shadows like behind them. Just give it a bit more definition. You want to lightly shade. I'm keeping it quite loose as well. Um, that's one way how you can achieve like an out of focus effect. If you keep everything super loose, keep everything really soft, don't have any really fine lines, keep everything really, really soft and kind of blurred. So I'm kind of flicking down back into that white fur, but in like loads of different directions to kind of represent how these white tufts are kind of overlapping and going in all sorts of different directions. It doesn't matter if it's not perfect to the reference photo, I've probably got like a few extra little tufts going on here, but as long as you've got the right sort of texture and feel to it, then that's absolutely fine. Then you want to work into those shadows again in the rest of the fur. So continue using that cold grey 3.
So just to keep building up that tonal value, I'm going to go in with the warm grey 4 and just continue to focus on those shadowy areas. This is where you can also start to build up that dark detail as well. So make some of these lines stand out. So make sure you get the start of that shadow underneath, but like I say, we are going to be focusing on the body fur in the future parts. So you can make a start on it and then just fade it off.
I'm going to add a tiny little bit of the light cobalt blue just into those brightest areas of the fur just to bring out more of those like subtle blue tints so literally just there at that brightest point at the front and then also towards the back It's very similar to that silver grey, but just slightly more intense. Like that. And then I'm also going to go in with the raw umber 50%. I know that at the minute, especially this beige bit in the middle of the fur, it does look quite dark and muddy, especially in comparison with that fur on the right. But you've got to think that this is more in the shadows and we can also go in with that craft knife slice tool to remove some of that pigment as well so we can still brighten areas up but anyway for now i'm going to go in with the raw umber 50 percent and just focus on making some of those lines a little bit darker so they stand out a bit more i did use this also in um, the middle part of the fur as well it's got that really subtle green like khaki color to it And because the badge has been photographed surrounded by like a field we can see in the background even though it's quite blurred and out of focus in the in the reference photo there is a lot of green in there so if it's been photographed near a field or in a field surrounded by a lot of greenery then that color is going to be reflecting back up onto the fur I'm also just going to briefly use the dark sepia just to increase the darkness of these shadows just underneath the face but like I said I'm just going to fade it off um, I'm mainly going to focus on it in the future parts but just to make a start and define like the edges of the face you want to use the dark sepia So you're constantly flicking either up towards the fur or just whatever direction the fur is sort of finishing in. Um, you want to flick in that direction, leaving gaps in between.
just from the edge of that black fur I'm just doing a few elongated lines into the edge of the white fur again just to help everything um, kind of blend together and merge together Just doing a few darker hairs, making them stand out. I'm just going to soften some of that dark sepia out by going in with the warm grey too. Just so it blends with those pigments underneath. I think I'm also going to go in with the warm grey 4, just add a bit more of a shadow to this area here.
like that. So at this point we want to pull out all of those highlights with the craft knife slice tool. You want to keep every single line super controlled and just kind of flick at the end of each of your lines. There's also this big whisker as well that kind of falls in front of the face, but I'm going to wait until we've done the body to draw the whiskers in. I'm using the bluntest part of the ceramic blade to give me the thickest line. So when we used that dark sepia and kind of flicked back towards the white fur leaving gaps in between, it's now those gaps in between that you want to work into with the craft knife slice tool to make them brighter so they actually look like tufts. Also have them slightly going in different directions and varying in length so it looks more natural.
So I'm going to leave that there for part four of this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial so far. We've made a lot of progress there. Um, so in the next part, I think if I just move my camera down slightly, we're going to be drawing in the nose and this mouth area. So it's going to be a much shorter part in the next part. And then we've just got that fur on the body to do, which is going to be kind of out of focus. So it's going to be very much focused around that and like blending and keeping everything looking really soft and subtle. As I said at the start, the link to my Patreon for more animal based colour pencil tutorials is in the description below. And I've also left the line drawing, the full materials list and the reference photo as well. So you can follow through this tutorial from the start. If you've got any questions, then do let me know in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please remember to subscribe to my channel to see more art related content like tutorials and artist vlogs. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I'll be back very, very shortly with the next part.